Oh, what's shaking, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum, joined by Anwar Richardson. We're talking Texas defense today, specifically new Texas defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski. So before we get started, you know, hit that like button. If this video entertains you in the slightest, we would love a subscription. Hit that subscribe button. We've got the, we got more where this comes from. Uh, Anwar, I suppose the conversation today centers around the idea, are we sleeping on Pete Kwiatkowski? I get questions all the time as it relates to the Texas defense. I even had one this weekend in my 10 thoughts from the weekend, which asked if I thought the Texas defense would be ranked ahead of a Texas offense and then suggested that both would be national top 25 units. I have to be honest. I, the Texas defense isn't one that I completely have my finger on. I know that Pete Kwiatkowski has a reputation for being a phenomenal defensive coordinator, but if football is about the Jimmys and the Joes more than the X's and the O's, this still feels like a Texas defense that lacks some important pieces. So the question is, can Kwiatkowski X and O his way around some potential talent deficiencies? Uh, or is he, you know, a guy that's going to need a few years to build this thing up? I, I, I can't say, like I said, that I have a good handle on what it is that I think he does with this group this year. The hardest part of this conversation catch is when we think about the last three coordinators, when you go back to Todd Orlando, Chris Ash, and now Kwiatkowski. And then really, if you go back prior to that, um, when you go back to Vance Bedford and, and Charlie Strong, and I'm just going speaking of my tenure here, the defense really hasn't been that good. I mean, it just, it no. just, they just have not over the last several years. And you know what, maybe Orlando's, you know, second season, maybe it was, it was, it was okay. But I mean, this is a defense that has historically, or at least the last seven or eight, eight years, you know, been kind of that bottom kind of half of the bottom, like, below the five level. So a little bit below average. Um, and we looked at a defense last year where you thought, okay, Chris Ash comes in and we get all the all season stories about Chris Ash and what he was able to do at, at uh, Ohio state, as opposed to Rutgers and the impact that was supposed to happen. And it didn't really happen. Like we just, we just really didn't see it. And so, you know, you've got a, you've got a group of guys, you got Kukowski coming in and you, and we hear positive things about what he's doing and implementing. And I think it was, um, Coburn, I think it was during Big 12 Media Days, was saying that, you know, the, the things that he said, uh, he said that when he Pete first got here, he was unsure of how successful he would be because the guy was like really, really quiet. And then Coburn eventually said, but he said when they started like getting into, you know, the practices and seeing the things that he was drawing up it was like mind blow. Like this guy is really good at what he does. He's a genius. He hasn't seen these kind of things and concepts before. Um, and of course that's one of the reasons that Sarkeesian had hired him. So I think that the thing that works against Kwiatkowski from our standpoint, I'll throw it back to you. We haven't really watched a lot of Boise state games and we haven't watched a ton of Washington games. So we have the stats and we have the numbers um, but you have to be you have to either be a really, really diehard college football fan or an avid gambler to say you're staying up to watch Boise State games uh, or you're just on a Thursday night. So that's I think there's a little bit of the unknown that it goes in there. And the last thing catches. We've also we've always heard about these good defensive coordinators that were going to come and do something in the Big 12. And then we just always see those plans just go up and smoke. And that's the other thing. Uh, it has nothing to do with Pete. It just has something to do with this is this kind of the history of this league. No, it's exactly the point that I was getting ready to make, which is Chris Ash came in with the big Ohio state rep. And the idea was he's the type of talent that can tame big 12 offenses. And it didn't really happen. Texas finished. I can't even remember. They were six or seventh in seventh. the big 12. Yeah, it was. They're in the they're in the bottom half of defenses in the Big 12 when it's all said and done in a year where everybody basically played the same schedule. You'll you'll never get a more honest look mm -hmm. at, I think, Big 12 stats and national stats. You know, some of these schools will play the little sisters of the poor three times early in the season and then it, their numbers drop down. At, but everybody played one preseason game last year and then the same schedule. So. Uh, Texas was de deservingly a bottom half of the Big 12 defense last year. 
everybody comes in with the rep and that, and I think that's, that might be the thing that PK has the biggest issue with, at least I think from my standpoint is it's just a matter of, I mean, even at Oklahoma last year, you know, they bring in a defensive coordinator again with big time chops and they think at Oklahoma this year that that's got a chance to be the best defense they've had in a while, but it's a multi-year process. It's not like anybody on the defensive side of the ball really shows up in 2021 and has instant success. And it makes me, you know, people throw out things like, do you think Texas will be top 25 in the country this year on defense? Hmm. That's the type of thing that to me, you say about a defense that has all the pieces in place, Mm -hmm. not taking any old dude they can find on the waiver wire in the transfer portal at linebacker. I mean, it's clear they have some real questions coming out of the spring about the linebacker position. Yeah. And they were basically anybody with a pulse that, that played linebacker that came through, they were at least kicking the tires on. We know they're strong up front. We know they've got some players in the secondary, but it's hard to even know how good that group is. What's a fair expectation? Because I feel like with, with Sark, if it's not a national top 25 offense, they're going to be people that think the offense didn't perform well enough. Herman has had a national top 25 offense in each of the last two seasons. So I think that there's an expectation that that doesn't take a step backwards, even with some new players. I don't know how to handicap the defense at all. You tell me what's an appropriate mark to hit is it if we do we just focus on the big 12 and say at the very least get in the top half and then you know somewhere maybe in the top three if you tell me that texas has a top three defense this year i don't know what i think that does for the record (laughs) because i still go back (laughs) to the quarterback position and go quarterback 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 but a top three defense would be i think for me they finished top three in the Big 12 in defense. That's a really good first year. And you can build on that because yeah. this still is a team that does have talent deficiencies. So to be able to improve the defense to that level, I think in year one would be a major accomplishment. But if that means they're 35th in the country, I just, I don't know what people expect. They, it feels like they're expecting a lot and my spidey senses are going off and saying, I just don't know a how fair that is. And, and maybe fair has got nothing to do with it, but I don't know how realistic it is either. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's, that's a tough sell, you know, and, and, and the hard part too catches when we look at everything in the big 12 and we look at the, the success that Oklahoma has had, if you look at it historically, they've had some pretty bad defenses. I mean, it's never been good, but it's been, they've had an offense that's usually been good enough to win the big 12. So like last year they took, you know, under Alex Grinch, they made some strides. Um, but historically just, they haven't been good. It just been like, you know what, we'll just score more than everybody else. <laughs> and, and that's how, you know, that's how they've won. So, you know, I don't know if Texas can take that approach and say, all right, well, look, we'll just going to throw out a badass offense and worry about it because I think Texas fans are always thinking, you know, the, the big picture, right? CFP national title. Do you have a defense that can compete against Alabama, Ohio State or Clemson? And then they laugh at the Oklahomas if they struggle in, you know, in the playoffs. And it's just like, well, you just got to have a defense good enough to get through the Big 12. Like if you just got a defense that's good enough to get big, big 12, worry about that other stuff another time. You got plenty of time to worry about that. What can you do in this conference so that you're not in a life or death battle with a Texas Tech, right? That you're not in this, this life or death battle with Oklahoma State. You know, the, the things that we've seen. Hell, just a couple of years ago, catch Kansas. Kansas here nearly upset Texas in DKR. So, you know, you, know, you needed a, a last-minute comeback to win that one. You need a defense that can play a lot, with this a lot more consistently. And maybe this new staff – We'll be able to pull that off. Maybe, you know, a new voice will be able to pull that off. I mean, we can definitely say catch and there's <laughs> the defense shouldn't be worse than they were last year. Right. So there's only room for improvement. There's only room for upside. You and I are, are high on Deshaun Jameson. Like we are. I don't know if he has a fan club, but I would say if, if there was one, we could probably start, you know, Deshaun Jameson 
fanclub.com. I think that's probably available on GoDaddy. And and we 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 like we we probably like what he's able to do. We, 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 <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah, no, you you got a choke out of me there. <laughs> so Andre Colborn is a guy that we're looking at catch that you know clearly, clearly the staff has identified as one of the leaders. A guy who's going to be an anchor uh, there in the middle. We heard a lot about Tavonje Sweat and his upside and how much of a kind of a freakish athlete that he could be. So they there seems to be the belief, at least at least on a defensive lineman, that the defensive line is going to be way stronger of a unit than they have been in, in previous years. To your point, the linebacker, there's some question marks at, at there and what we're going to see, you know, once we get past like DeMarvion, right? And, and what maybe what that looks like is Ray Thornton, kind of a guy that we keep hearing all the time about, right? What Ray Thornton is able to do, um, you know, from that position. And then, you know, we talked about the the, sa- the secondary and then the safety. I mean, Jaron Thompson, that's the name that we hear a lot at, at the safety position. You know, we'll have to see what that looks like. And I know Josh... Uh, Thompson, Adam Moore is kind of that. Um, oh, I think it's Adam Moore and Cook is in the the nickel position. But they go off the top of my head. So, like you said, we have a lot of names. We just right now, it, it, a lot of guys are upside. Just not a lot of guys who are proven as of this point. So, Jamison makes first team All Big Twelve in the preseason. Coburn doesn't get named to the team, and there's no honorable mention that gets announced like they would do at the end of the season, but. I think you and I agree. Coburn got some votes, right? Um, I'll, I would say that DeMarvion Overshone might have got a vote or two. Like, I think he's definitely talented enough to do that. He was pretty good last year. He wasn't great, but he was a good player. Mm-hmm. Name another player on the defense if we just take those three away. <coughs> Excuse me that you think got a vote from someone, someone out there was like, yep, this is my first team all big 12 player. I can't think of one. I mean, there, that, 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 that list was, not, I, I feel like every media member in, in the state of Iowa must've gotten like two votes or something. So, cause that was a, that was an Iowa state, Oklahoma kind of fill out ballot kind of thing. So I can't There's imagine like 50 there was people another. who fill out ballots, right? You said what? It's like 50 people who get ballots. It's, yeah. It's not a well, huge, they, like, they send it to everybody who, co- you know, who has like yes. a big 12 credential. So, you know, we're 50, but how many people, you fill them out is totally different. By the way, sure. I just want to say that. I'm, I'm just saying that it's, I'm not saying, I guess my, my, the larger point that I'm making is how high can your expectations be for a defense? Realistically, when, Cause we could go on the offensive side of the ball and I could at least come up with some names that might've got a vote. Maybe, maybe not, Mm -hmm. maybe not more likely, maybe not, but I could at least do it. Like Jordan Whittington is an example. He, I could see somebody giving him a vote. I'm not saying he came anywhere close to making first team, but I could see people saying, I think that guy's going to have a big enough year that he makes the team and could get a wild card. I can't do it on defense. And I don't know what we're supposed to do and say about a defense. We're going into the year. There's legitimately three people that warrant having their names talked about before the season starts. Yeah. I mean, I think catch at that point, you, you, you and the staff are probably aligned at that point. That's probably one of the reasons why they went to the transfer portal and was going after every top notch defensive player that they thought was available. You know, the, yeah. some of the guys that they were able to get, but you know, we covered the guys that they were not able to get. Like, um, who, who's my man with the with the name that was at USC? I've already forgot it. Nate. Uh, <laughs> exactly. There yeah. you go. It's we don't have to remember it anymore. But you, what we're saying is they they went after everybody who was top notch in the effort to improve this defense. I think catch just like you, they went and looked to top to bottom and said this, they can improve. And they tried to improve in as as many areas as possible. They basically just loaded up at linebacker and we'll see what that, what that does as far as an impact. Again, you know, one of these Coburn talked about, and I think we talked about this in a previous video was one of the things they were excited about, some of the guys in the, in the defense are excited about, is that they brought in guys who competed for a national title, won a national title. So feeling like there might be some voices 
that they can listen to and lean on who, who have won before. Um, and that says a lot because this is a program that has been good, but not great. And then you, when you're talking about OV or even talking about Ben Davis, I mean, you're talking about people who at least were there competing for a national title, winning a, a national title, having that voice of like, this is what you should or should not do. These are the areas that, you know, should or should not be able to. I mean, it's, just, it's an equivalent if someone hired me away, catch, and said, let's go and start up a message board. Like, I would be able to be able to say, right, these are the things that probably work. These are the things that don't work. Um, and this is how we should be able to kind of turn this thing around. So we'll see if the new voices catch, if the new voices make an impact, even if, ben, if somebody's got, even if like a Ben Davis doesn't play a lot, it's still, we'll see if these new voices have an impact in there, uh, you know, the, whether it's the new coaches, some of the new players who played uh, at other spots, you know, and maybe just kind of a, a fresh start. But I tell you what, catch the only thing that's for one of the last things I'll say is the, the, the biggest apprehension or or fear factor that I think Texas fans, fans should have is to the thing that you said it's not like you get to open up the or the first three games of the year and you just get to practice and work on it and develop it so it doesn't even matter if you make mistakes in week one when you open up with week one against Louisiana with a new defense a new offense that's where you got to have like a little cause for concern and hope that especially when training camp hits that they're able to turn it around yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that the cool thing is if you're quick, quite Kowski and I'll just end it on this, we're setting the stage for you, for him, I should say to impress people. Like, I think there's a lot of room where you can at the end of the season say the defense improved if even modestly, like I think Sarkeesian is the one with more pressure on him because the expectation is the offense was already borderline Nash. It, it's weird to say that, right? I don't think anybody thought of the Texas offense as nationally elite, but the numbers say they were close. The numbers say they were just outside the top 10 for a couple of seasons. And in terms of points per game last year, they had one of the best points per game, I think in the, in the history of the program, wasn't it like 42 or something like that? Was like, a lot. They were scoring a lot of points and they just mm -hmm. weren't winning games. And so, look, I think everybody's like, offense should be top 25 in the country. What's up, little man? Flex on us. <laughs> Come here, Burchess. What do you want? <laughs> Two days in a row. <laughs> okay. Go get back on your iPad. <laughs> I think he just wanted us to see that he wanted everybody to take buy a ticket to the gun show. <laughs> he uh, he's It's summer. He did, he's not in camp this week, so I have him watching some educational stuff on YouTube. And so he just got finished. So he just was kind of like, you know, checking he in. He wanted to flex. It's okay. If I looked <laughs> at least as he didn't good have as he did, I'd have come my out shirt off too. At least he didn't come out with underwear on. That would have been worse. So thank God he put on some clothes or something. Uh, what's going on at Anwar's house? Uh, look, for myself at Anwar Richardson, hey, tell us in the comments section. This will be one of the things we can talk about in tomorrow's show. I'm curious. Lay out the expectations for where you think the bar should be for this Texas defense in year one. Anwar and I clearly aren't sure. And that kind of uncertainty, I think, leaves a lot of room potentially for margins of success to exist, some higher than others. Let us know what you think really would represent a good first year given that Texas was not good on defense a year ago, what would be acceptable for you? Put it in the comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll do this again tomorrow when I think, I think on war, it'll be time for a session of buy or sell. We'll ask for your questions. We'll take your questions. Anything goes, we'll go back and forth and answer whatever you've got for us. I think that's what we'll plan for on Wednesday until then you guys be good to each other later.